this is starting to feel a little bit like Tomb Raider. Hello everybody, I am currently on Silvermine Bay, which is on Lantau Island in Hong Kong. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, we recently just started renting an apartment here in Lantau Island, on another part of uh, the island here. Uh, Lantau Island is a massive island, it's got an airport on it, and all the rest of the stuff. And I'm currently trying to find a Silvermine Bay waterfall. This is apparently a bit of a waterfall, it's kind of a trek away. And I do have directions for it on my phone, but I feel like I've taken a wrong turn somewhere because uh, I haven't had any new directions for a while. I can't really tell where I'm going. And there are helicopters flying overhead being rather loud. But I'm going to keep going. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a guesswork today because I don't know if, if the water is going to be flowing. We're currently in winter. It's not really raining. It hasn't rained in the last few days. I'm just kind of hoping at this point that it might have some water. If it doesn't, then that's just life, I guess, but at least I'll know where it is. But first, I need to find it and not die in the jungle. So that right there was the lower falls of Silvermine Bay. That's the, uh, the, like, the lower um, waterfall area. And apparently that is not the biggest one. <laughs> that is massive. I'll put a picture up on here on screen that I took on my phone where somebody was taking a picture of the waterfall in front of me and it just looked tiny compared to <laughs> this massive thing. And apparently that is the smaller of the two. So um, there's currently not that much water right now, but I can tell in the summer when it rains a lot, we're gonna get a bunch of water down there and they'll be very cool. But I want to look at what the massive falls is, because if, if that is small, I want to see what this big stuff is. So I've got more climbing to do, so let's go up this really steep hill and I try to not look out of breath. Anybody that says Hong Kong is just a city building place really needs to see this. Look at that. That is amazing how you could be one hour out of the city and you're just in the middle of mountains. It's unbelievable. Look at this. So I remember reading on the directions that I found um, to this waterfall that it mentions something about the entrance of one of the old silver mines. Now, of course, this is called Silver Mine Bay because it used to be mined for silver. I had no idea where it would be on the path. It didn't show any pictures of where it was, but I've just come across it and it is amazing looking. Like, I don't know if you can just see in there, but there's a massive hole there. That's obviously where they mined for the silver. And there's this kind of contraption thing. And what used to look like a resting stop but it doesn't look like there's anything stopping me kind of going in. So, I'm not condoning trespassing, but there's no one here to stop me. Okay, so technically I didn't break and enter if I didn't break anything. So, the key's actually just here. Now, it looks like it's been boarded up. Yeah, danger, no entry, but this is amazing just to see these old mines. I've never actually seen any of these. These are the, f I used to come here as a kid. For those that don't know, I actually grew up in Hong Kong for like seven or eight years. And um, we never really came up this far. I never actually seen any of the silver mines before. So this is actually really amazing to see. Um, there was a sign out in the front. You might have actually seen it um, in, one of, in the last shot there, but um, actually says something about being mined from like 18 something, 1800s. It was. So this is obviously mined for a really long time. And they stopped something like 1896 or something like that. So they mined it for a good 100 years or so. Um, so that's really quite amazing. This is cool. It's a shame they boarded it off, but it makes sense. Let's, uh, let's keep going and uh, see if we can find these waterfalls after a quick little detour into a silver mine. So it definitely Feels like I'm doing some tomb raiding now. Oh boy, I'm in the middle of the forest. <laughs> but I can hear the water, if you can just. Hear that? So I'm clearly near it. I'm just gonna keep going, ducking through all these reeds. But apparently this is meant to be big and it just gets bigger, so. Should be there soon. 
They weren't kidding when they said it was big. Look at this thing. It's easily several hundred feet. It's just a shame there's not that much water. A little bit higher looks kind of interesting, but you can imagine in the summer when there's a lot more rain, just how much water is going to flow down this thing. It's going to be amazing to, uh, to try and take pictures of. Actually kind of reminds me of the Fairy Glen in Scotland. You know how it's just so wide and vast and it's got a pool of water in front of it. Um, I'm going to try and climb up. Apparently there is a path somewhere to get up there. And apparently that is pretty amazing. That's where a lot of people um, like chill out, like a rock pools kind of area. So let's try and climb up there. All right, so I'm about halfway up the waterfall at this point. You can see there's a good chunk of it still behind me, but I have to stop here because this is really freaking cool. And I'm actually going to get a picture of this, like a proper picture. I'm going to pull out the camera because there's this pool here that's been man-made by these concrete pillars. But look at this freaking view. And this is ridiculous. It is so stunning. <laughs> it's so crazy looking. I keep hearing voices or something, but that might just be me. Now I keep hearing voices up there, so I think someone's up there. But um, this is just staggering. I mean, look at this. It is unbelievable. But I have to get a picture of it. Uh, the sun is setting over there, as you can probably tell. But um, that's such a cool view. And with this pool here, like, absolutely stunning. I have to get a picture. I have to get my gear out for this. All right, so I've got the camera all set up. I've got my GPS on. I remember that. I've got my polarizer on because I want to bring out some contrast in the sky right now. I'm just playing around with settings right now because it's a little bit hard to kind of gauge it. Um, I'm just taking images and just kind of looking at what the back of the camera is telling me. And there's a part of me that actually wants to just do brackets to kind of get all the shots because the light kind of changing a little bit in the sky and I want to make sure I get this foreground so actually I'm going to raise the tripod up a little bit um, I'll throw the picture on screen that I'm just doing right now it's a little bit low I want to make sure I get more of this um, field and like whole mountainous area along with it so I'm actually going to raise this up a little bit and hopefully try and get the shot and still have some of this awesome light that's happening all right so we're now a lot higher we're now pretty much all the way up you can see there's the pool here and then we've got this amazing view with the amazing sky. Now I've got it pretty close to the edge here of the water you can see. What I'm trying to do is just frame it up so you see the water and then it kind of glides into the sky kind of like a nice cross in between. But I'll hopefully throw the picture up on screen right now. And what I'm doing is I've do I still have the polarizer on and I wanted to make sure I had the most contrast to the sky and I'm getting that. But what I'm going to do now is actually, I've got a custom mode set up for bracketing, so I can just quickly jump into that. And because I'm in manual focus, everything is the same. It just does a quick uh, five shot bracket of minus three all the way to plus three. So I'm just going to go through these really quick. Now it's just going to be super bright. Yep. But now I've got a lot of detail in all the, you know, the shadows into the highlights. So now I've got a ton of information. I'm trying to think whether or not I go further up to see if, you know, up here there'll be more amazing stuff. I'm quite happy with what I've got here so far. Um, I might actually jump over to where my bag is just over here and try and get more of the water into the mountain, into the, the water into the field area rather than the water into the mountain area just up here. So let's, um, let's try that. I'm going to do a couple quick more shots here and then jump over to where my bag is and we'll try those and hopefully try and get up and try and get a couple of pictures and then go back down. So the sun is very quickly disappearing behind these mountains up here. So sadly, I don't think I'm going to get any more shooting done today, but I'm quite happy because I found this frankly amazing spot. Uh, I'm definitely going to be coming back here in the future because this is so cool i had no idea this was even here this is absolutely amazing um i did manage to get the camera up here i'll put the picture up here on screen right now uh, i managed to get a bit more of the countryside um in the shot this time there's not as much mountain um i simply couldn't get the camera wide enough 
Uh, it just it isn't capable of capturing all this amazingness uh, in this wide landscape. Even with my 16 to 35, it's just, this is breathtaking. This is amazing. I love you, Lantau Island. If only I knew the magnificence that you had to behold when I used to live on this amazing place. So, what do I do now? Uh, I can continue to shoot, but the light is drastically heading over that way. It's just behind that mountain, because that's where it's setting. Um, it's actually setting over on an island, well, not an island, it's a place on Lantau called Tongfuk. T-O-N-G-F-U-K. Don't laugh, I can hear you giggling through the internet. And uh, it is meant to be really nice over there. It's meant to be absolutely superb. Um, unfortunately, I head back to Shanghai tomorrow, so I don't really have time to do that today or tomorrow. But I am back in Hong Kong in a couple weeks' time for Chinese New Year, and I'll be here for a long time. So I think that is me now. I'm just gonna pack up. I kind of got the shots that I wanted to do today. I kind of came to explore. I really didn't expect much at all, to be very honest, because I knew it hadn't rained, and I didn't think the waterfalls would be very good. And of course they weren't, they're not that great. Um, when it does rain here, I can imagine these being absolutely spectacular. Like this thing here will just be absolutely amazing. So, um, I'm still glad I came and brought out the video camera and the photo camera because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to take pictures of this amazing looking thing. So, I think without further ado, I'm gonna have to end it there because I need to get back home. Uh, I need to climb down. Um, I might go to a restaurant that is near here um, that is absolutely amazing. It's one of our family's favorite restaurants in the world. So I'll try and grab some clips for that at the end of this vlog. But if I don't, um, rest assured that you will see this restaurant in the future in um, future videos. So I'm just gonna pack up now. Uh, and in case I don't say goodbye to you guys right now, I'm gonna say goodbye now. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'm glad we came out here and filmed. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Congratulations on staying to the end of this vlog and as a very special treat and a thank you to you, I am going to give you some legit food porn right now because this is amazing food. We've got here, this is uh, broccoli with garlic uh, laced with crack cocaine as far as I'm aware. Um, this is um, minced beef with ginger and spring onion. That's also laced with crack. And this stuff is my favorite. This is um, minced beef fried rice with lettuce. Um, these are the three dishes that we always used to have um, when we used to come here, when we used to live in Hong Kong. These are the best tasting food in the entire universe. And this restaurant that I'm in right now is super busy. You can probably hear it because it's just always packed full of people. There are two tables with at least 10 people on them right now. So there's lots of people here and they're all Chinese so you know it's really good food. It's been owned by the same husband and wife team for years. It's awesome to see this place still going. Uh, and this food is absolutely amazing. This is the best food in the world in my opinion. So. Hopefully you've enjoyed these little extra treats for the food. If you ever find yourself in Moi Wo, otherwise known as Silvermine Bay in Hong Kong, definitely come and check this place out. This is the first restaurant inside the Mu Wo Seafood Food Court. It's really hard to miss. Uh, it's a big place and the food is absolutely amazing. They cook it right in front of you. It's just behind you guys. Absolutely stunning food. And I'm gonna continue eating this before it gets cold. I've already, and by the way, this broccoli, it was about double this size. Uh, I've just munched my way through it because it tastes so damn good. So hopefully you've enjoyed this legit, and I do mean it's it's proper food porn right now. It's, it's actually making me salivate. So I'm gonna get back to eating. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this extra little bit on the end of this very fun vlog. I'll catch you in the next one.